No, I don't know, said Gorbag's voice. The messages go through quicker than anything could fly, as a rule, but I don't inquire how it's done. Safest not to. Ugh, those Nazgul give me the creeps. And they skin the body off you as soon as look at you, and leave you all cold in the dark on the other side. But he likes them. They're his favorites nowadays, so it's no use grumbling. I tell you, it's no game serving down in the city. You should try being up here with Shelob for company, said Shagrat. I'd like to try somewhere where there's none of them. But the war's on now, and when that's over, things may be easier. It's going well, they say. They would, grunted Gorbag. We'll see. But anyway, if it does go well, there should be a lot more room. What do you say? If we get a chance, you and me will slip off and set up somewhere on our own with a few trusty lads, somewhere where there's good loot nice and handy, and no big bosses. Ah, said Shagrat. Like old times. Yes, said Gorbag, but don't count on it. I'm not easy in my mind. As I said, the big boss is a... His voice sank to a whisper. A, even the biggest, can make mistakes. Something nearly slipped, you say. I say, something has slipped. And we've got to look out. Always the poor Uruks to put slips right, and small thanks. But don't forget, the enemies don't love us any more than they love him. And if they get topsides on him, we're done too. That passage is from The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, written by J.R.R. Tolkien, and it is a conversation that is overheard by Samwise Gamgee between two orc leaders, Shagrat and Gorbag. Recently, a clip from the TV show The Rings of Power has been circulating, which depicts an orc with a wife and child expressing opposition to war. There has been a lot of discourse about it, with many critics jumping on the bandwagon of calling it un-Tolkien. Now, I'm not a fan of The Rings of Power. For the most part, I think it's boring fan fiction. However, the one thing I think the show has done right is its handling of the orcs, and I don't actually think it goes against Tolkien's vision. So let's break down the complaints with this clip. First of all, was there such a thing as orc women and orc children? As far as I can tell, the answer is yes. For the orcs had life and multiplied after the manner of the children of Iluvatar, is a quote from the Silmarillion suggesting that orcs reproduced in a mammalian fashion. As well, Bolg, a character from The Hobbit, is referred to as the son of Azog, cementing paternal lineage. Tolkien said in a letter that there must have been orc women. Seemingly, orc women and children aren't the issue here, so what is the main complaint? It would seem to be a more abstract issue about humanizing the orcs, which, according to these experts, are not meant to be anything more than the dark side in a simple good and evil equation. So, was that Tolkien's original vision for the orcs? I don't have any special insight into this topic besides having actually read The Lord of the Rings, so I'm just going to go ahead and read straight off Wikipedia here. Tolkien's Moral Dilemma J.R.R. Tolkien, a devout Roman Catholic, created what he came to feel was a moral dilemma for himself with his supposedly evil Middle-earth peoples like orcs when he made them able to speak. This identified them as sentient and sapient. Indeed, he portrayed them talking about right and wrong. This meant, he believed, that they were open to morality like men. In Tolkien's Christian framework, this in turn meant that they must have souls, so killing them would be wrong without very good reason. Orcs serve as the principal forces of the enemy in The Lord of the Rings, where they are slaughtered in large numbers in the battles of Helm's Deep and the Pelennor Fields in particular. If Tolkien wanted killing orcs not to be such a problem, then they would have to be without any moral sense, like ordinary animals. Both Tolkien and other scholars have been aware of this contradiction implied by this position. If orcs were essentially beasts, then they should not have had moral sense. If they were corrupted elves, then treating them as other to be slaughtered was straightforward racism. Tolkien made repeated attempts to resolve the dilemma, trying different approaches but not arriving at what he felt was a satisfactory solution. The gist is, Tolkien was conflicted about the orcs. Ultimately, this opens up a broader conversation about artistic license and adaptation. The main talking point here seems to be that the Rings of Power writers think they know better than Tolkien. But if Tolkien himself was unsure of orc morality, how is that possible? Now, I don't even think the Rings of Power should exist in the first place. I think Amazon should have left well enough alone. But if you are going to adapt Tolkien, why not explore this small bit of moral gray area? I mean, look at Shagrat and Gorbag in The Two Towers. 
Clearly, these are not mindless beasts. They are individual agents with their own goals and aspirations which don't directly align with their masters. I would say, in my reading of Tolkien's work, his orcs are chaotic neutral. Without powerful leaders like Sauron and Saruman to manipulate them, they basically just like chilling in mountains and grabbing booty and shit. There is definitely a savagery to them. Shagrat ends up killing Gorbag in Return of the King over Frodo's mithril shirt, ending what could have been a beautiful romance, but still. If I were to stake my claim on Tolkien's moral dilemma, I would say that creatures capable of complex thought and reasoning are able to shape their own destinies and overcome natural impulses. And that's my thing. I'm okay with retcons if they make a story more interesting or more scientifically accurate. It's like the fire in the Acolyte that people were arguing over. The way fire behaves in the vacuum of space in the Acolyte is consistent with how other Star Wars properties have depicted fire in space, but also, in modern day, we know that's not how it works, so to me it just kind of looks stupid. Anyway, if I cared about the Rings of Power at all, I would say that Adar is my favorite character, because he represents an interesting and modern idea of what an orc leader could look like. And I take this issue very personally because I am a goblin myself. I disagree with the sentiment of why inject complexity where there wasn't any before, because, as we see with Shagrat and Gorbag, there was always complexity.